Lysolda was a woman who enjoyed power, ambition, and stabbing people with big knives, preferably while they were tied down. In her biggest ritual that she ever performed, she rose Rakdos himself from the lava pit of Rick's Madi, proving herself one of the most powerful beings on Ravnica. But let's cut the story off here, at the height of her power, because what happened next really isn't pretty, and Lysolda couldn't be found after everyone was done eating. Welcome, welcome to the Uncommon Commander. My apologies for how long this video took to make. Let's just say this video and my channel went through a lot of... Uh, upgrading. For instance, I realized I was trash at making thumbnails, so I've created a template. Artists use their skills, failed engineers use templates. But let's not beat around the bush forever, we have a lovely scary lady to talk about. So today's commander is Lizolda the Blood Witch, who I affectionately call Thin Lizzy. I mean, her name begins with Liz, and she's thin. It seems like that's all that would be required. That said, she does look like she'd be more at home in the 80s, maybe in a hair metal band, but we can't have everything. And I think that's pretty cool too anyway, so whatever. Anyway, Lizolda is a 3-1 human cleric that costs 1 and Rakdos mana to cast. She has the ability, pay 2 generic mana and sacrifice a creature. Lizolda the Blood Witch deals 2 damage to any target if the sacrificed creature was red. Draw a card if the sacrificed creature was black. This immediately leads us to an aristocrat's line of gameplay. The thing is, it also points toward a red burn style of play. Best yet, the opponents aren't just losing life or taking damage, Lizolda is actually dealing the damage herself, so if we can put some keywords onto her damage, those two damage pings will be counted as that type of damage. One of my favorite 60 card decks I ever built was a Rakdos colored Wither deck, so I think I'd like to focus on that type of damage today. So the keys to victory are to give Lizolda Wither or Infect, sacrifice creatures that are both red and black in order to get the most that we can out of them, and do a withering burn style of aristocrats. And we're doing it on a budget. Speaking of, today's budget was $100. That said, I got the deck down to 95, excluding basic lands. So if you want to upgrade it, go out and buy yourself a nice bedevil. And since we're talking about budget, the most budget way I've ever found for buying cards is through TCG Player. I buy from my LGS when I can, and get the rest of my cards through TCG Player, as they have, without fail, given me the best deals. If you see a card that you want to buy, or are planning on buying cards anyway, please click my affiliate link for TCG Player in the video description, so they know who sent you. That really helps me out, and I appreciate it. Oh and yeah, I've also got a Patreon up now. You know, like I said I would, two videos ago. I also said I'd tell you about it, so I'm telling you about it. It's only got a couple of tiers right now, but I'll probably add more later. Go ahead and check it out, it's also linked in the video description. Now without wasting any more time, let's talk cards. We're going to want a ramp, but we're in red and black, so we're going to be relying heavily on artifacts for it. We also want to avoid 3 mana ramps since Lizolda costs 3 to cast herself. Don't want to mess that timing up. So to land ramp, we had Wayfarer's Bubble and Burnish Heart. After that, we're completely dependent on mana rocks. Those are Everflowing Chalice, Soul Ring, Charcoal Diamond, Fire Diamond, Mind Stone, Prismatic Lens, Rakdos Signet, Hedron Archive, Sisse's Ring, and Ergolem's Eye. So our only 3 mana card is Land Ramp. You may also note that a lot of these artifacts tap for 2 mana. That'll be nice since Lizolda's ability costs 2 mana. This deck primarily runs through Lizolda, so we're going to want to protect her pretty well. For this we have the MDFC, Maliki Rebirth, and the Enchantment Auras, Dark Privilege, Skeletal Grimace, and Gift of Doom. We also have the equipment, Ring of Zathrid, which offers regenerate and can pump the creature up over time. If Lizolda does get removed multiple times and you can no longer recast her, don't panic. This deck can function on its own as a typical Wither deck, it's just a whole lot better with Lizolda. Speaking of Wither, we're not running many actual Wither creatures. Instead, we're running ways to give a creature, namely Lizolda, Wither, Infect, or Wither-like effects. These cards are Soul Scar Mage, Light Sickle, Fists of the Demigod, Corrosive Mentor, and the Infect cards Tainted Strike, Glistening Oil, and Phyresis. As a note, 
Glistening Oil can be used as a removal card. It also combos well with Ring of Zathrid, as both have upkeep triggers that negate each other. Now that we're set up to sacrifice some creatures, it's important that we get some death triggers into play. These are going to be Sadistic Glee, Eternal Thirst, Jury, Master of the Review, Mayhem Devil, Sir Conrad the Grim, Deathbringer Thakter, and Stalking Vengeance. We're running a lot of direct damage and life loss here, and we're also running some plus one plus one counters. Deathbringer Thoktar in particular is one of my favorites as he gets huge and then you deal tons of direct damage with him at instant speed by making him small again. He's like a clock hanging over your opponents, with them wondering which one he's going to blow up on. I also really like Sadistic Glee. Anytime you sacrifice a creature to Lizolda, it'll trigger, and then if Lizolda is able to kill a creature with her 2 damage, it'll trigger again. Pumping her twice for each activation is extremely powerful, and can help you find a surprising Voltron win. We aren't running a whole lot of tokens in this deck, but this seems a good place to mention them. We're running Nest of Scarabs because it absolutely rocks with minus one counters, giving us tons of card draw with Lizolda. We're also running Minion Reflector because there just aren't enough black and red multicolored creatures in here to finish a game out. The sooner you can dig to Minion Reflector, the happier you'll be. Now let's talk about card advantage. Obviously Lizolda is an engine for it, as long as we have black creatures to sacrifice, but we do have other ways to gain advantage here as well. For card draw, we have Dark Prophecy, Dusk Urchins, Erebos Bleak Hearted, Outpost Siege, which can alternatively be used as a fine death trigger, the Scorpion God, who makes a fine commander for traditional wither decks, and Baleful Force. Baleful Force probably looks unreasonably expensive and slow. 8 mana and he draws a card on your upkeep? And you have to pay life for it? Well, if you look closely, that's not just your upkeep, but each player's upkeep. On a trip around the table, this will have been well worth the price. If it lasts two turns, you'll feel like a bandit. If nobody removes it and the life loss gets to be too much, listen to Leliana Vess's advice and sacrifice it. We're also running some recursion and reanimation. Those are Font of Return, Strands of Night, Dawn of the Dead, and Garna the Blood Flame. Yes, the reanimators have some costs attached to them. If we weren't living life dangerously, we wouldn't be Rakdos. Our spot removal is largely creature-based and largely damage-based, but there is some other fun stuff in here too. These target removal cards are Crumbling Ashes, Dreadhorde Butcher, Rakdos Charm, Blood Cultist, Showstopper, Murderous Redcap, and Grief Tyrant. Basilisk Collar could generously be considered targeted removal as long as it's equipped to Lizolda, giving her death touch damage. Song Mad Treachery is another MDFC. We can use it as a land if needed, or if we need removal, we can steal a creature and sacrifice it to Lizolda. If it's not red or black, we won't get anything for it, it'll just be a 7 mana removal spell. But sometimes removal is necessary at any cost. Our board wipes are really soft board wipes. These are Rakdos Right Knife and Midnight Banshee. Both of these take time to do their work, and neither of them wipe the entire board. While it wasn't very Rakdos of me, I decided to be nice. And save money. We have a handful of cards that just have great synergy with the deck, and so we'll just talk about them here. Those are Anathemancer, Blowfly Infestation, Necroskitter, Colrath Knight, and Flayer of the Hatebound. So yeah, lots of direct damage, lots of minus one counter synergies. Maybe I'll make a popper Colrath Deck Knight later. Man, I really love Wither. And I really love Colrath Knight. Alright, now that we've discussed everything else, it's time to look at our land base. First up, Lizolda's ability targets creatures, so we don't want Hexproof getting in our way. To help with this, we have Arcane Lighthouse and Detection Tower. We have Grasping Dunes and If Near Deadlands to put minus one minus one counters on creatures when Lizolda or our other Wither creatures can't. Those combo nicely with Colrath Knight or Necroskitter. Ghost Quarter and Tectonic Edge will destroy problem lands for us. Memorial to Folly will help recur a creature if necessary, and Rogue's Passage will help a sadistic Glee to Lizolda or another big creature get through. To color fix, we have Myriad Landscape, Lava Claw Reaches, Smoldering Marsh, and Temple of Malice. Lava Claw Reaches is a favorite here, as it can be used as a sacrifice if none are available, or as a surprise source of damage. You never know when you'll need a surprise source of damage. 
And as you can see, we don't need a whole lot of color fixing here. We're only really color hungry in black, and even then our basic land base is weighted heavily toward black to compensate. Speaking of, our basic lands are 7 mountains and 16 swamps. And with that, you've made it through 95 cards of the deck. I'm not sure if Thin Lizzy were fans of the band Europe, but it doesn't matter because a Europe cover is playing in the background regardless of what they'd like. And you know what that means. It means we're in our final segment, where I go through 5 cards in some particular order that is not necessarily worst to best. This is the final segment. It is my favorite segment. It is this segment that I like to call... The Final Countdown! Today's Final Countdown will be cards with the highest risk and highest reward. A perfectly Rakdos way to list cards. At number 5, we have the least risky card of the bunch. That's not to say it's no risk. You see, number 5 is Azra Oddsmaker, and it has odds right in the name. A strong implication of risk. This little card draw engine lets us discard a card at the beginning of combat on our turn. We then pick a creature that we think will hit an opponent for combat damage. If it does, we draw two cards. And we can do that every turn. We'll fill our graveyard for recursion and our hand for casting. Fantastic. Oh, but what if the creature you pick doesn't connect? Well then, Lizolda gets mad and sacrifices Azra Oddsmaker and we draw a card anyway. And you know what? Why stop drawing cards? At number 4, we have Caress of Phyrexia. This one is meant to draw us cards, or to push an opponent over the poison counter edge. This isn't usually risky to us, but putting any poison counters on us will make an opponent with a proliferate deck very happy. And that's ignoring the fact that our number 3 card... <coughs> that our number 3 card will totally cause us to take a bunch of infect damage when we use it on a creature that has infect. This card is Arc Bond. It's a small, instant speed spell that usually serves us as a board wipe. But, if you give Lysolda Infect and then deal a bunch of damage to her, you could find yourself with a poison counter victory, if you've done your math right. Let's get away from Infect though, and try to remember that a significant part of our card advantage is actually recursion and reanimation. And let's also consider that our number 2 card is Underworld Cerberus, a card custom made to shut down graveyard play. Well, it does if we don't have a sacrifice outlet anyway. But if we do, we can turn Underworld Cerberus into a mass recursion spell. This leads us to our final spell. It's fine to give Lizolda Wither, but what about all your other creatures? Well, for that we have our number one card, Everlasting Torment. Someone wants to gain life like a Selesnia Jerk? Nope. Someone wants to prevent damage like a mono white deck from the 90s? Nope. And the best part, it turns all of the damage we deal into Wither. Oh, you want to know what the downside of this is? Well, it turns all of your opponent's damage into Wither too. But what did you expect? This is the number one card on a list of highest risk cards in a deck. Oh, but before we leave number one and move on to the end of our video, I do want to note a cute little combo that I've slipped into this deck. Everlasting Torment combos with Flare of the Hatebound for infinite ETB triggers, and, more importantly, infinite death triggers. Just have Flare of the Hatebound target itself with its own ETB from the graveyard, and then, when you want to turn the combo off, have it target a player instead. If anyone is alive anyway. And with that, we're nearly done. I want to thank you for watching today's video, and please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Even if you can't support me through Patreon and TCG Player, you can support me through these simple button clicks. I'm going to leave you today with this limerick. Why a limerick? Because Thin Lizzy is Irish. Now then, it goes like this. When I saw Lizolda, I thought to myself, she's hot. But soon enough, her wither gave me the rot. But I rolled a pair of dice and found her a sacrifice. And then I realized, eh, she's really not. Bye, everybody.